Hello, I'm Mayor Jim Darling, and this is your City of McAllen Legislative Update. And today we're very fortunate to have our state representative from District 41, Bobby Guerra. Bobby, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. And thank you for being here. Uh, the, the session's uh, happening right now, and you took off your, for some time from your busy schedule to be with us. Well, Mayor, um, in the House right now, um, bills are being referred out to committee. Um, and so typically on Fridays at this time of the year uh, during session, we get to come home. So, And I always try to come home the first chance I get because this is my hometown. and and uh, um, I love being in the valley. I grow, grew up here and it's God's country. And, and most people don't understand that for six months out of the year and, and now with the way the sessions work, our legislature works, you have interim hearings all over the place. That you're separated from your family Monday through Friday and often on weekends on that for six months. Unlike um, say Washington where you bring your family with you, it's very difficult to bring up your family for six months out of the year. Well, that's a good point, Mayor. Um, the Texas legislature pursuant to our Constitution is very, very unique compared to many states. Um, we meet for 140 days every other year, officially, uh, when the session uh, begins. However, what people don't understand is that uh, when we're not in session, we're still having interim hearings um, in, in various matters, and so we're still taking away from our families, but it's a great sacrifice, which is why I decided to do this after my kids were out of the house. And, and that a lot of people don't understand it's not a full-time job. You make less than minimum wage, certainly. And no matter how many hours you work, it's just a set, set standard. So um, you have to, well, that's true, right? Well, it's true. Uh, we make $7,200, $7,200 a year. Uh, when we're in session, we do get um, living expenses, uh, very nominal living expenses. But it's a great honor to serve the state of Texas. Texas has a unique legislature in that we are a civilian legislature. That means that we all um, work, go home and work in our districts in various capacities. Many of the legislators have businesses, they're, they're professionals. I'm blessed in that I have great partners and associates in my firm um, who, see, who see the need in this and, um, and, and give me the, the latitude to do this. Uh, I, I'm not making money for the firm right now. Yeah, you either need to be independently wealthy, which neither of us are, um, or have a very understanding employer, which I do at Doctors Hospital to be mayor, or have, a law, in your case, a law firm where you're a principal and, and um, it costs you money to be out of the office, but at least you have a job to go back to when, when it's well, over. Well, that's true. Plus, um, you also have to have a very understanding spouse or significant other and very understanding children because we miss out on a lot of things. Even though my kids are not in the home right now, at home, uh, my, my youngest is away to college, the boys are finished, but um, we still miss a lot. Yeah, it's a, it's a sacrifice. It very much is, but I think that um, it's a worthwhile sacrifice. I think this last session we saw historic, historic changes here in, 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 in the entire region, as you say, uh, the Rio Grande Valley. Um, and uh, with the with the the merger, the medical schools, SpaceX, uh, I can just go on and on. And um, we had a success, successful session, and I, I think we're going to have another one. And, and I know, speaking of Valley, we had the first Rio Grande Valley Day at the legislature, and, and you spoke there and participated. And I think pretty, we're pretty pleased with the fact that we all got up there together as one one area. Well, I had goosebumps actually. Uh, other areas of the state come together uh, in a unified fashion, and we did it for the first time. And what that tells me, Mayor, and I've heard you say this many times, there's more power in 1.3 million people than 140,000, 80,000, whatever, depending on what city. And I think um, the city fathers of all of these cities have finally figured that out. And I will tell you that the delegation, the Valley delegation from Brownsville all the way to, uh, to Mission and, and La Jolla have all figured it out as well. And we work very well together and we support each other with our bills. Yeah, I've noticed that. You know, wh what does a delegation think as opposed to what an individual representative thinks? And that and seems more, to be the question. More importantly, Mayor, what really gives you real goosebumps on the floor is when an issue comes up and other members of the House of Representatives from other parts of the state say, what's the Valley delegation going to do? because they know for the most part we vote as a block. There's a lot of power in that. And, and that seems to be more important because of the makeup of the, of the House now um, in, in um, Austin with um, 
it seems we're getting further and further apart from a political spectrum standpoint. Well, I will say that we're blessed uh, uh, with a great speaker. Uh, we re-elected him, um, and uh, Speaker Strauss, I can't say enough good things about him, uh, his leadership, and but he has, he, people don't understand that it's his purview to decide what committees we're going to serve on. Now, there's seniority has some, some degree of, of, of uh, say in that, but at the end of the day, it's the speaker, and he put us all on the committees that we requested uh, and committees that we thought would help the Rio Grande Valley grow and prosper. Now, you got on some important committees. Let's let, uh, share well, the committees you got appointed to. Well, right? last session I was on uh, public health and uh, transportation, and both are very critical to our area. This session, um, the speaker was getting a lot of pressure for folks that wanted to get on transportation. That membership included uh, was 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 made larger than last session. But I, I, I wanted to give the speaker, you know, working with the speaker is a good thing because um, he understands that you're a team player. And so I went to him and said, it's important to stay on public health, very important, and it's important to stay on transportation. But as we all know, uh, Mondo Martinez uh, is, is the vice chair of that, and um, I think that we're going to see some big changes with TxDOT. Um, but I told the speaker, if you need some latitude with me, then I would be more than happy to serve on insurance. So I was given insurance, plus I was put on calendars. And these are three hugely important committees. It's a lateral transfer over to insurance, and um, I'm looking forward to serving the Rio Grande Valley in that capacity. Yeah, uh, calendars is important, kind of known as the graveyard for unpopular bills or where, you, where that, can get ha that can happen. So maybe give us a little, how, how does calendars work? Uh, well, we have the calendars committee, and then we have local and consent calendars committee. Uh, and they work a little differently. But the bottom line is, uh, for the most part, any member can kill a bill that they don't like that comes through calendars. So you've got to be on real good terms with the calendar committees. That's right. So you, and this is your first year, so you haven't experienced. Um, this will be my first session, session with on a local and consent calendar. And um, we have a great chair, Sophronia Thompson. She's been in the house 40 years. And what a wonderful lady. And um, um, she helps us help the valley. Okay, and your other committee you said is um, public, public health, health, which is huge. And the beauty about public health and insurance, and this is one of the reasons I said that would be fine if the speaker put me on there, I would be pleased with that as well. There's a lot of dovetail between public health and insurance, as we all know. And so I can even serve my, my community in that capacity in even more ways. You know, insurance is um, interesting, especially in Texas with um, auto liability insurance issues and now some of the, the health insurance. And I don't think people understand the significance of the regulation in the insurance industry in, in Texas. Well, and uh, not to mention also TWIA, which is uh, Texas Windstorm uh, right. Insurance uh, in Texas. And it, it applies, TWIA applies mainly to, uh, only to the coastal areas. But, you know, our neighbor is in Cameron County. And, um, you know, we all work together, and quite frankly, what affects Cameron County affects Hidalgo County. And so we want to make sure that, we get our, that, that our citizens get their fair share and are also protected and protected uh, insurance-wise as well. Now we're a little bit, not quite at the midpoint of the session, so now the committees are going to start hearing bills, I think, um, pretty in rapid response to the, the filing of them. How many bills have been filed to date, do you, do you know? I, I really don't know, but uh, there were, I think, 5,000 bills filed um, last session. They don't all make it through. Many die in committee, many, because also remember, too, that um, the chair of each committee decides whether he's even going to hear a bill or, uh, and put it to vote. And then the committee members decide whether they want a bill to go further down the road um, to the House of Representatives where it's debated and uh, if it passes there then it's sent over to the Senate. What people don't understand is it takes both houses. It takes the House of Representatives made up of 150 members and it takes the Senate made up of 31 members. And so I basically represent 170,000 people. 26 million divided by 150 you come out to a, you, you, you see where the number comes from. And so. Uh, I represent approximately 170,000, all of us do. The senators represent about, around what, 700,000? Right. So um, uh, we work very, very well with our senator. I work very well with Senator Nohusa and Senator Lucio 
um, and we help the senators on our side, and they help us on their side. Sure, they, you know, they're going to they're looking for a house sponsor on their bill, and somebody that can get that bill through there, uh, because although they do have some influence, they're not they're not part of that chamber. That's right. I, I can't say enough good things about our senators that we have from the valley. Uh, Senator Nahosa has been, you know, he's been, had a lot of experience in the House before. Now he's in the Senate. Uh, tremendous amount of institutional knowledge. And we work very, very closely together. Uh, I've known him for years when I was a young reporter and an anchor with Channel 5 many, many years ago. And that's when I first got to, be, uh, got to know him. But um, I will tell you, I, I cannot say enough good things about the entire Valley delegation. We all work so hard uh, and we all work very well together. And um, nobody's stabbing each other in the back. We're all trying to do the right thing. You just remind me, now I'm interviewing you. I That's knew, right. I knew you back in 78 when you were a reporter. Mary, so. I remember interviewing you when I was a young reporter, and you were at first started out as assistant city attorney and then became the city attorney quite quickly. And I spent a lot of time um, sticking a microphone in, in, in your face, if I remember correctly. Well, this is a much kinder and gentler process than that back then. Much more so. Yeah. Much more so. You know, now, some of the buzzwords we've heard, uh, the news that's coming out of Austin, first was the open carry, uh, I mean, not the open carry, yeah, the open Open carry, carry uh, the handgun. firearms, uh, handguns. Yeah, now, now, you could do rifles right now. That's not a prohibited in Texas. And this was just the handgun open carry, and that seemed to be uh, not very well received by uh, Well, um, all I can tell you is, is that uh, on the opening day of the session, there were some things that happened with fringes of that group um, that put a bad light on it and left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Um, I'm not going to comment. I don't need to at this point about open carry, whether I'm for it or not, because quite frankly, it's not before us right now. Now, will it? The governor says it, it, that he that he wants it there, but I don't know. I don't know how far that will or won't get because of uh, there was a lot of tension that occurred. Um, there was a group that stormed into apparently into one of the House members, and it got it got quite tense, and so um, that left. Uh, this is not a good thing. Um, uh, all I can tell you is, is that, you know, uh, I've been hunting and fishing my whole life, and, and I have guns, um, and, 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 but we're civil society, and when we approach these issues, we have to approach them civilly and with respect, and respect for each other's opinions. And when that respect is not shown, um, then bills have a habit of not going through. And, there were some problems. Thank God nobody from the valley. It was just, there were some fringes out there that were creating a problem. I, I remember years and years ago, I was in a restaurant and um, somebody had a gun and he had it sticking in his back, of his belt, you know, and it was a police officer who I happen to know. But I looked around and people were pretty nervous because they didn't know who he was and here's a guy with a gun stick. And, and when you see it, uh, it gives you a different picture in that kind of uh, an atmosphere. And um, so anyways, I, I always felt, I remembered that and I thought, do we really want to have people walking around and scaring the rest of the population, you know, unless... Uh, well, you know, Mayor, there are other, there's a lot of states in the union that, that have open carry and it, it, it seems to work there. Whether it would work in Texas or not, I do not know. The issue is not before us at this yeah. time. We'll deal with it if it comes to us and I'll weigh it out then. Um, um, again, I, 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 have, I have many hunting rifles and pistols myself, um, but we, we all have to be responsible in, in, in those endeavors. Yeah, respect, you have to look at both sides of what you're saying before you do that. I always do that. Yeah. I will listen to anybody, and um, sometimes my mind changes right. um, once a debate happens, and that's what a civil society is supposed to do. You know, there are some people, there were, last session, at the end of last session, there was a, a fringe, uh, uh, a small fringe, I must say, of representatives from other start parts of the state that were taking the position that this next session compromise would be considered a dirty word, a dirty word. And yet they would throw the Constitution in your face, and I thought how ironic, the United States Constitution of America was probably one of the biggest compromises that we will ever have and look what we have such a wonderful country and I'm so proud to be part of this nation and it was created because of compromise amongst great minds 
Right. And that's really part of the legislative process. It's it, part of the legislative process. It's part of what makes America great. That's right. One of the other things that I talked about, it's not compromise, but uh, was the use of a National Guard on the border. And that's, that affects us much more than the rest of the state, um, especially in the area of um, when we're trying to do economic development, people really have a feeling that we're not a very safe area because of all that publicity. And so it's, it, to, to us, it's, it's got another aspect that the rest of the state doesn't have to face or, or deal with. Mayor, that's a very, very good point. And, and I think that, that it sends the wrong message um, that the valley is, is not a safe place. And we all know it is. It's one of the safest places in America. We all know there's a lot more crime percentage-wise going on in Houston and Dallas than there's going on here in the city of McAllen and in all of, all of the cities here in the Rio Grande Valley. So we don't want the wrong message going out there. And so uh, the deployment of the National Guard has been very controversial. I personally have some issues with it. Um, but again, that's the purview of the, uh, of the governor. Um, but I think it's incumbent upon us to make that as short-lived as possible. And, and, and the best way to do that is uh, for um, the, the DPS, and, and I, I, I really admire the Colonel uh, because he seems to be working with our local law enforcement to see if maybe we can make that as short-lived as possible because the DPS does a real good job. They've been short-handed in the past, and, and I think that, that the National Guard is trained for military purposes, not law enforcement. The DPS. Our local sheriffs, our police departments are trained in law enforcement. Let law enforcement do its job. The National Guard has another place, uh, has other, other things to do other than militarize the border. And I think it's a bad economic message to send because we have Fortune 500 companies wanting to come here and uh, we don't want them being scared off. No, and we, um, you know, I always wondered why they didn't call the chief of the Border Patrol and ask his opinion. I haven't, and I, maybe he can't or won't or protocol doesn't want to, but I would sure like to know what he thought about, you know, the effectiveness of the National Guard and, and whether um, uh, that, that there would be something alternative that would be just as efficient and less, less from a publicity standpoint negative for our area. Mayor, I'm going to say this, and that is, is that I do know that um, our border sheriffs, especially Sheriff Guerra, who happens to be my cousin, but I do know... You relate to everybody, but... Yeah, well, <laughs> um, I come from a very, very old family here um, since 1750 in these parts, but... Uh, and my father was county judge for years, um, so we're... By nature, we're pu we like being public service servants, but I will say that our, um, our sheriff, um, our sheriffs, plural, uh, our local police departments, in cooperation with the DPS, are working on initiatives um, to put uh, other Texans at ease as to how safe uh, the, uh, uh, this area is, um, and we'll focus on law enforcement and cooperation amongst each other, which I think is what, is what it's all about. Yeah, that's, and I th hopefully there'll be a resolution this session. And um, one of the things that we were talking about on unique border issues is a bill that you have, uh, 979, that, deal with, that deals with, somebody said, how does that relate to the border? It's a, a, a grant for agriculture, from the Agriculture Department, for us to, well, why don't you explain the bill? Well, Mayor, last session, um, um, the, many of the growers uh, and many of the, suppliers of produce and many of the retail stores um, were concerned that with the super highway coming in from Mexico that is complete and here now we were not going to be prepared for all of the produce um, coming from uh, uh, western uh, from the west coast to the east coast uh, and right here to our ports and so it was brought to my attention and if you go down here you see firsthand there's produce just sitting there it, because there weren't enough federal inspectors. So I proposed a bill to increase the number of federal inspectors by training more inspectors with uh, A&M's entomologists, uh, so to speak, as an example. But there was a lot of pushback because it had a big fiscal note. So we retooled the bill, turned it into a study, and I went to the chair of that committee, uh, Chairman Tracy King, who is from the border area, and I said, Tracy, please bring your committee to our area. Let's have a committee hearing here, and then let's show them what's going on at the bridge. 
Well, they came down and um, they saw firsthand and they saw the need. I'm getting a positive response now, but we've tweaked it to where there won't be a huge fiscal note. Um, it'll be more of um, um, a grant money uh, that would be used. Uh, but I have to say, I have to commend our our local growers and our our um, our uh, the producers of, of of all of these goods. What people don't understand is that a lot of the farmers here on this side have farms over there. And they want to move them. And we have a huge demand. Americans want fresh produce year round. We want to provide it to them. It's a huge economic impact across the United States. Um, and it's a great economic impact for Texas. We had to show these members that, and they understand it now. And I think we're going to have a real good bill that's going to pass this next session. And, and, and it basically is a cooperative agreement uh, between um, private and public partnership that will help get more uh, uh, it's going to move produce more quickly uh, faster uh, across the bridges. We, we have a similar program in, in place now in fact Senator Cornyn is trying to turn it into a per permanent program. It's a pilot program where where the city um, or Maquila Dora for instance could pay for extra border patrol um, duty personnel to move traffic and we've done that for Santa Semana 36 percent of our sales tax come from Mexico you want people sitting on a bridge for five hours right. and say well why doesn't the federal government pay for that well they have a, a budget but in Washington they don't set budgets on Santa Semanas or Black Fridays you know they don't think along border issues like that so uh, we're a customer of them and so I thought well, it was a customer and we all benefit so we participate and this would be a program that's extended to agriculture we're training for um, uh, customs customs inspectors to help them because we do have a surge on our border and they have so much a finite number of um, inspectors so um, unless Washington really does something drastically and they've not done that in the last 200 years um, as customers of on owners of that bridge, uh, we have to work together with Bottom the federal government. Bottom line is, I believe that uh, private inter enterprise sees the need for it and is yeah. putting skin in the game. Right. And we're getting cooperation from the, the from the state of Texas, um, and I think the federal government. I've been working with our congressman on this. It's so important to our area. It's so important to our growers and shippers, um, and and the consumers throughout the state and the nation, and. Um, you know, the produce is already coming across, and it, it, it has gone to Nogales, right. Nogales and now it's coming, coming here. here. And, and that's produce from all South America, all over, not just Mexico. That's obviously. right. So, uh, all over the world. That, that's there. so true. And so um, there's some exciting things on the horizon. Yeah. You know, the Panama Canal is not finished yet, but look what's going to happen to our ports all up and down the coast. And so we all recognize these things in the legislature, and so... Our Cameron County colleagues come to us and ask us for help, and we go to them and ask them for help, and we're working mano a mano, a brazo a brazo now together, and I, I love it. And um, we're, we're one big area, and we're realizing it at one big region. So let's think regionally. Well, and I, I talked about that. It was almost blasphemy for a while, but uh, operating our bridge is a system. Uh, our bridges is a system. You know, we have uh, private bridges. We have city-owned bridges. We have uh, pretty well pr private and county-owned bridges. On Mexico side, they have state, federal, private, and everybody's kind of fighting for the same thing. I thought, well, if we could get together, at least in Hidalgo County, with the five or six bridges we have, and operate as a system, and go to the federal government and say, we think here's the most efficient way, and I think Maquila doors and passenger vehicles will pay for efficiency. If I could pay uh, extra two dollars to have one hour taken off the bridge. Um, I think I'd pay that, you know, when you're sitting on the bridge for four or five hours with your family or a door truck or vegetables or whatever that is. So it, it kind of makes sense. And we'll, I think once that programs get up and running, we'll have um, the private enterprise participating in those two. The spirit of what you just articulated right there uh, has been incorporated into the bill um, that I just filed that will be heard. And I'm hearing some very positive response from the community members. And I think it's going to pass. And we're real excited about that. Um, the Rio Grande Valley is an economic engine, and it's the future, I think, of Texas. And we need to be prepared for it. And um, I think with forward thinking, we're getting there. Well, um, you can tell your enthusiasm for this process in, in our area. And, and thank you for all you do. I really appreciate it. And, and good luck in this session. We know you bring some, some good things back to the valley. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I really appreciate coming uh, here and visiting with you. And 
um, just let everybody know if you're in Austin, come by and see us. Come see your it's your house, our representatives, it's your Senate, it's your capital. So come come to Austin. Um, we encourage you to do it. Thank you, Bobby. Thank and you. Thank you. This has been your City of McAllen Legislative Update.